Vou começar fazendo uma pergunta para a Helena. Na verdade, duas. Uma parece um pouco mais fácil, uma mais complicada. Aqui. A primeira é, que é da Gabriela César, que é da minha equipe, mas eu não estou favorecendo ninguém. Tá? Aquela que mandou mais perguntas aqui mesmo. Quais tecnologias vocês usaram no projeto, além do sensor? Quanto tempo levou desde a idealização do projeto até a publicação dele? Essa é a primeira. E a segunda é se você considera que o projeto cruza a fronteira entre ciência e jornalismo. Thank you. Um, okay, first, how long did it take? I think we they started like the the two physicists started on working on that idea in May 2018, and we were like done done by it with everything everything a year later. But we had the results like the the actual like important publication was in December. So. Up until the sensor was, was running, it took like May, June, July, three months. Then we had like a month to actually prepare a publication, to actually do research, like the journalistic part, to program a website. I haven't shown the website yet because it's uh, all in German. And um, then we had two months of the people writing and just supporting them, and then we had one month for the analyze. So all in all, it was like eight months for the core part of the project. Um, what other technologies did we use? Um, yeah, we basically we, um, we um, used a lot of specially trained AR. Um, since I'm the journalistic person in the project, I can't really get into details. I'm really sorry. Um, if somebody is interested in that, um, it can actually come to me later and. Um, I can connect that to my colleagues because the physicists can explain that way more better. Um, we used a different, we used a lot of algorithms. Um, we used um, uh, picture recognition to actually sort out if it was a car or something else overtaking. Um, yes, and some web development um, in JavaScript for the website. But that's it, I guess. And the other question was if it's crossing. Science and journalism. Yes, it is. It, um, it's definitely somehow. A combination, it's definitely um, somehow crossing a line or somehow, um, I don't know, mixing up. We also, um, I, I was telling a story before, there was actually a project on, in a, at a German university and they got funding from the, um, from the government to actually do the same thing and they had three years for it and they couldn't do it. Um, because they were thinking way too complicated, way too scientific, to just get it out on the streets. And I think that's a huge advantage if you do a project together paired with journalism. Um, you kind of need to work for the results. Like you kind of get a, need to get it out there and you don't have the massive time scientists sometimes have to work on it. And in this case, that was our advantage why we actually got it running before everybody else. Mommy. Uh. <laughs> Tem uma pergunta do Galeno que diz que certa vez ouviu que os dados oficiais do governo, especialmente sobre economia, não eram confiáveis. Você concorda com essa avaliação? Isso mudou, melhorou? E existe realmente essa não confiabilidade dos dados governamentais? If the data from the government is yes. unreliable? Yeah. No. The thing is, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the um, What happened in 2007, it was the statistics, the official statistics uh, were intervened and uh, the poverty and the inflation rates were not accurate. So uh, that was not reliable at all. So the private consultants also were banned from telling another inflation and it was a difficult situation so we what we did there was build another one with the, with NGOs that were measuring prices we built everything we could to show how inflation was growing but it's not that the the the, the, the official uh, information is is reliable and it's the, the the only thing that we have and we work with that with that um, it the, the problem was with that special uh, entity that was the the statistics but now it it's corrected 
since 2016. So we are okay. Uh, Elena, do you prefer that I made in English? Okay, uh, yes, okay, yes, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I read the manifesto that you and other colleagues like Jacob Vicari made about the journalism of things. Yeah. And there is a whole discussion about the use of technology by journalists. Uh, I want to know if, is it possible to imagine that newsrooms in Brazil, that's a poorer country compared to Germany, uh, can use devices and technology in their daily work? Is it possible to believe that, ne that these newsrooms could have an innovation lab as well? How, how do you see that? Um, yes, I actually think it's possible. Um, you got to understand where we are coming from. Um, our newspaper, it's not a big newspaper in Germany. It's a regional newspaper, not really um, well known in, or like, you know it in Germany, but it's like not well, well funded or anything. Um, what we did, we always looked out for external funding. We all, all got our, our bigger projects were funded by some um, partners somewhere else, like some media innovation funds. Um, I think that is really important. If you want to do innovative stuff, go find the money somewhere. Um, we actually, like building a sensor is not, the, the, I think the um, expensive part about it is the time it takes. Like you have to actually pay somebody to do it and to, I don't know, build 100 sensors in two weeks. Like, that's two weeks of stories you can't do. So the sensor is uh, really cheap. You can, you can build a really, like, the whole, this thing might not even cost $20. So the, the, the parts of it are really cheap. So I think it's doable. Um, I think you actually, the best thing is to reach out to partners like universities. Connect with the universities, look for a maker scene, people who are actually building their own little sensors, they have great ideas, they have great contact. Look out, for, look out for companies who actually work with that sensors. Like we just had a conference um, in Germany on uh, the, called Journalism of Things, that we, what we actually call it, the sensor journalism, because we all we use the Internet of Things, all these connected devices to get data. And there were um, a bunch of companies also there, and they're actually really interested in, in sharing that data with journalists for um, for a lot of reasons, and I think when you when you just get the data and do your own analysis without the company being involved, there's no reason to be critical about that. So, yeah, I think there are a couple of ways um, to do that, but it actually takes a lot of effort. Uh, because that we say a lot that there's, there is a, a crisis here in newsrooms uh, with layoffs and certainty. Uh, and this affects, uh, I think, significantly non-traditional teams like data teams, you know. Uh, how is the situation in Germany, uh, especially if print newspapers like Der Tespigo, has the transition to digital been occurring naturally with no problems? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was just joking about how I sometimes have colleagues coming to me and asking me about how to open an Excel sheet. Um, no, of course, it's, um, it's a big problem for every, every German newspaper I know. Um, we haven't figured out how to monetize digital journalism. Um, we somehow need to find a model how to do it. Our newspaper doesn't even have a paywall. Um, and we can barely, barely afford the, the printing version. Um, and it's the same for, for every newspaper in, in Germany, even for the big ones, even for, for the nationwide ones. Um, I think the transformation is still going on, even in Germany. I think we are at a point where we actually have an idea where it could go, but we are still working on um, convincing everybody that that could actually work. Okay. Uh, La Nación is known for collaborative projects. You know, how, how do you see the importance of involving new readers in these projects. Do you think this is an outlet for small data teams to build large and relevant projects? How do you see that? We love it. <laughs> I think they love it too. Last, I was commenting that, sharing the, the, today that uh, I didn't put it there, but last year we have a raise in, in, in the prices of electricity and we asked the readers, send us your, your receipt, your, uh, uh, yes. You understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we received 2,000 of them. Yeah. And well, then we had a problem because they were from all the country. It was not a problem, but 
every municipality has different taxes. So the national, uh, we, we said, okay, we, we start typing this, structuring this, everything, but let's ask if we have a centralized first, we, we should have done that. Um, the government said, no, no, give it to us if you, if you solve this problem because we, have the, we don't have all this centralized information. And the problem was that every municipality has its own taxes. So national government wanted to, to reduce the taxes, but they didn't affect all the people because there were local taxes. I, they love it, and now that's why we are very involved in this nature project, because people are already participating and we are helping them raise their voices. So I think it's very important and it's a, a change of mindset to journalism, to, to, to be more, to let them participate, build something, and then share it. It's, it's really, really very good. Uh, there is a question from Vitor Batista here. Uh, he asking, how do you organize the data collected in La Nacion data? Uh, do you use uh, any tool of uh, business intelligence internally? No, <laughs> we use Tableau, but we use Tableau for more for like mm, visualization because we don't need developers to do quick this, uh, visualizations. But we are, uh, we have, ClickView also. We have another business intelligence tools and we, we use Power BI and uh, also we use Google Data Studio for different things, but we make friends with the business intelligence department and that's key because they love to, to participate in our projects that are journalist projects. They are bored to do the same thing every day about the business things, so they love to participate. So. When we have larger, large-scale projects, we call them and we credit them, and, and, they, and they really love it. Um, and but what we use is SQL, uh, SQL, Postgres, and for, for large, only, only for large uh, data sets, we invest in downloading and updating them. That, that, that makes sense because we have a lot of process of normalizing in the middle, so we have to script that. Uh, but for the small that are in a spreadsheet, no, we, we keep it, uh, we keep downloading it as spreadsheets. No, that's it. <laughs> there is a question for, um, for Elena, an anonymous person. Uh, he's curious about your next plans, next projects. Can you? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, okay, the, the, our so-called animation lab is pretty new um, and we started in January and had to finish up with so many big projects. Um, we uh, have done another crowd research project on um, housing and um, ownership in Berlin, um, but, which was a lot of work and which has been going on in the past year. Um, we actually finished that and we're actually um, pretty happy that we're done with all the big projects now. Um, after the uh, the whole bike and Radmesa project, we were all like, okay, let's cut cut it down a little bit. Um, no, we don't know. We um, we're looking into next year and we have some ideas. We would love to uh, work with sensors again um, and would love to um, I don't know build something new. Um, we're excited about it, but we don't have any concrete plans. Uh, and let me see another question here. Just before a Tani está me cobrando aqui que está quase acabando. There is a, an anonymous question here. And how did the team guarantee that the cycle, the people that participate from the project, didn't uh, change the behavior using the sensor? You know, uh, how did you do that? Um, so the sensor or the, the, the data collecting from one ride was uploaded to our server after every ride. Like you, you could just click a button and it uploaded to our server. And um, my colleague actually checked the data every day. And he checked if um, the numbers coming in would make sense. That like he could actually tell from looking at it right away if the sensor was attached correctly, if, it, if the sensor was working correctly, if there was no like, I don't know, miscommunication with the smartphone, if the smartphone app is working correctly, if the uploads were correctly. 
Um, he actually checked that every day. And um, also the participants were really great. Um, and um, this did send a lot of pictures of how they attached it and did send a lot of emails um, asking about if everything was all right. So they were really involved and into it. And um, I think that was a big part of the success of the whole project. Okay. Uh, um, last question. Okay, Chumomi. Uh, let me see who's question. Who's, it's an anonymous question. Uh, what are the comparative results of uh, engagement of the uh, audience? Uh, page length, interactions with information, downloads. Do, do, can you speak some? some about that? We we have. If if you look for the mm, last five years in La Nación, at the top thirty more viewed applications are all applications that are developed by La Nación data and the creative uh, department that do interactives. We think that newsrooms must accelerate change toward, towards these profiles in which uh, you don't only think in only two dimensions. I mean, you have to think interactive and uh, these are the results, and that's why we are looking for two more developers. And we are also in a crisis in Argentina and in the industry. But the newsrooms have to learn, the, the journalists have to learn to speak the language of the developers, only understand and learn a little, like we can learn here in these events, that we, that's what, that where we started in events, and paying attention that all these inspiration cases are not one person or superpowers, but many people using tools that are sustainable, that it's nothing, no, neither us can, can pay a lot to, to build some of this stuff. It's, it's, a, it's teamwork, and sometimes it's opening to the community. Innovation is sometimes just open and share. That's it. Bom, queria agradecer. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't answer. Well, I, I, I said that, but for example, well, we have uh, uh, interactives example. that have more than one million page views, two million, I don't know. Uh, the, this tableau of the, of the dollar, because it's repeatable, it has more than 300 million views, because we use all the same every day, of, and it's the dollar, but like that, we have uh, elections, for example, it's a hit, but it's everywhere. Um, the maps, as more granular you make it, more we love it, and more the audience loves it. The more they, they can participate and make their own story of, of a, an interactive, they love it better. So we really recommend it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bom, queria agradecer a Helena Mom, queria uma salva de palmas para as duas, por favor.